Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So today I wanted to do a quick unboxing and little review of the Retro Flag NES Pie case that everybody's going crazy about. And I'm also going to show the ultimate cooling kit for the Raspberry Pi. So here we get her out of the box. Automatically, you can see really nice looking device, case, whatever you want to call it. Comes with a, a little manual, a little vague, just some diagrams. Comes with a nice little screwdriver, Phillips head screwdriver. I can never have too many of those, so love having them because half the time they break. You get your screws as well. So then looking at this thing, I want to compare to the look of the NES Classic because that's what this is based off of is the look and feel of an NES Classic. So here we have the real NES Classic, and right off the bat, you could see color is a little different, size is a little different. The NES Pie case is a little smaller. The top piece has almost a yellowing to it, uh, or a different, different shade of gray, I, I don't know. It doesn't look bad, I'm not complaining about that whatsoever, but it's it's an obvious difference as far as the color goes, but nothing major. So opening her up, we do have all of our electronics in there. And then just to show you how easy it is to actually get this set up, we're gonna go ahead and put her together. So you just wanna pull all your wires up and then place her in there. You're gonna put your connector on the GPIO and it's gonna go all the way to the top with the red facing to the right and on the bottom. So just make sure you have it set in that way. The diagram will show that as well. And here you kind of want to make sure when you're plugging in the ethernet and the USB that your wires are not hanging over because you won't be able to close the case if, if that happens. And then to mount the pie to the case, you just have these two black screws. So you don't have to fidget around looking through this to figure out which screws they are. It's the two black ones, and they go on the bottom there where I just showed. And they're kind of a tight fit, so I get them in there. They're kind of tough to screw in, but once they're in there, the pie will be secured. So let's go ahead and secure her in. And that's pretty much going to be half of the battle as far as putting this together. But like I said, this is a very easy to put together case. And it's, it's an extremely popular case. And now that I have one in my possession, I can see why. You know, it, it looks awesome. It replicates that look and feel of the NES Classic better than any other company has done so far. And with all the included electronics in order to, to move things around and have the power and reset buttons and change the placement of, of the USBs, it makes it really nice because, you know, when you had a normal case and you're having your power supply and your HDMI coming out the side, the micro SD on the back, your USBs for your controllers through the front. It was just a, a mess, to be honest. But with this, you know, they, they changed the layout, so that's cool. But it's not without issue, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But here I did want to look at this ultimate cooling kit for the Raspberry Pi. This thing is pretty awesome. And I'll put a link in the description for it. Do not buy this on eBay. You're going to pay too much. It is available on Amazon, and I'll have that link in the description for you guys. There's people on Am on eBay, anyway, selling this kit for $12, $13 bucks or so, plus like an additional $8 or $10 for shipping that are within the states, and that's just ridiculous. Amazon has it ready to ship within the states. You can get it in a day or two. Only other option if you want to get it cheaper is to go through China, and yeah, you'll be able to get it for you know, probably less than 10 bucks or so. But on Amazon, I believe the price was about $11. So this kit, essentially it's a big heat sink with two fans attached to it to pull the, the heat away. And it does come with this thermal tape that you attach to the bottom and then you attach her to your pie just like so. Now this, it's gonna depend on the case on if, it's gonna, if your case is gonna be able to handle it. Obviously you cannot use this in a Flurk or a Biku or anything like that. But this NES Pi case, it fits perfectly. And you'll go ahead and attach 
the pins to the top board up there. It even says fan on it, and it tells you positive and negative which sides to put it on. So you go ahead and attach it that way. And she does fit and work in the NES Pi case, which I'm very happy to report that because a lot of people were wondering when we seen this fan out there, this cooling kit, like, wow, this thing looks awesome. This really might be the ultimate cooling kit. What? Is it going to fit into the ultimate case? Nobody really knew until now that we're getting these in our hands. So, yes, this ultimate cooling kit, which is a big heat sink with dual fans, works and fits perfectly in the NES Pi case. So here I'm just screwing everything in to show you. Bam, everything fits, everything's snug and tight. These screws, they kind of, they take a little bit to, to screw them in. It is a pretty deep uh, threading, so it took me a moment to get it in there. So don't don't think that it's, it's not screwing in. You just got to get your Phillips head on there properly and screw those screws on in and you'll be good to go. So once that's all done, I said it's going to take you a minute to get this this case set up including if you get this ultimate cooling kit it, it's nothing easy peasy to get this bad boy put together there's a lot of other cases out there a lot more complicated and they don't even do what this case does and as you see here there is a little compartment on the bottom i thought was kind of neat you know you could put your micro sd cards in there to store them kind of cool i guess we have all our ports on the back for our 3.5 millimeter audio our hdmi and our power and then on the front we have our ethernet and a couple USBs under the flap. And then we have the two USBs on the side, just like the NES Classic would. That way it actually looks like a little console with your controllers coming out. So obviously, no case is worth a damn till we do the ultimate test and see if we can easily insert and remove a micro SD card. So as you see here, easily inserted, fairly easy to remove. There's been other cases that access is a little easier you see here, I you know, not a real struggle, but you got to get a nice little grip on there or, you know, get your nail on that lip of the micro SD card to get her out. But like I said, no big deal. The, the ultimate test for me passes with this case, but there are a few issues here. For example, not major, but this black piece is just a sticker. It's not plastic like on the NES Classic. But once everything's put together, she does feel real heavy and sturdy. I mean, it's not real extremely heavy, but there's some heft to it, especially including the Ultimate Cooling Kit, you know, fan kit in there that I'm just loving. I'm going to have to get me a couple more of these. But overall, excellent case. I give her a thumbs up, but we do have those concerns. The sticker is kind of an issue, but not that big a deal. The only other problems are going to be our power and our reset. Now, you're not going to use your PC, and when you want to turn your PC off, just pull the plug. You're not going to want to do that. You're going to wind up having issues. It's the same thing with your Raspberry Pi. So this is a design flaw in my eyes, in a sense, because it can be used and used properly, but you just need to understand how to use it. The power button, you are not ever going to want to use that power button to turn your system off until you have done a proper shutdown within emulation station or attract mode however you're running this bad boy you need to make sure you're doing a proper shutdown within the operating system let her shut down it'll take a moment and then you can go ahead and cut the power to the system and press that power button now once you want to turn her back on boom hit the power button she'll power right back up but like i said if you want to utilize it properly, you are going to have to do it that way. Do not ever press the power button just to turn the system off. It'll turn it off, but it's just cutting the power. And if there's any kind of processes going on that is accessing your micro SD card at that moment, you do risk corrupting your micro SD card. Issues can happen. You don't want that. Now, the next issue is going to be the reset button. I'm looking at the reset button as being fairly pointless. There's no use for it other than this, in my opinion. And this is just my opinion. So don't knock me or beat me up for it. But the way I feel with the reset button, the only reason you would ever want to use that is if your system froze. If just everything went haywire, something crazy happened, and your system froze. Go ahead and click that reset button. 
let her you know reboot make sure everything's cool and then do your proper shutdown if that's what you need to do at the moment but that is the only reason i see that reset button being usable now with that said there there are mods out there that people have done there's a couple of them that i am aware of one of them will use the reset button as your power on and off which i don't really like that it's it's not really mimicking the way the case was designed and then there is another one to where you can use the power button as a proper shutdown to where you don't have to go in and shut down the system within the operating system you can just press the button and it'll run a script and shut it down and then you can also use the reset button which will have a script for it as well that will properly reset your system for you now those modifications both require soldering and a little bit of skill in order to do not everybody's going to want to do that so i really don't recommend this case for people who want it to function that way but don't have the skill or know-how to do the soldering and the minor modifications that it requires but if you know how to use a soldering iron if you're more savvy than than the rest of us and you can handle it go for it buy this case do what you got to do for me i'm kind of lazy i'm going to leave my case as is and just do a proper shutdown now the other situation besides the power and reset we all understand that it does not function the way we want it to just you know as a quick note once again recap make sure you do a proper shutdown within the system and then press your power button unless you modify the system and you're running scripts and you've rewired everything then you'll be good to go the only other issue i have with this case is the price gouging so you've already seen me do a video on this once but i feel a fair price for this case is going to be anywhere in the 20 to 30 dollar range if you have somebody trying to sell this for 60 to 70 bucks say no it is an excellent case don't get me wrong but once you get into that territory of paying twice as much for your case as what the raspberry pi costs i i think the case needs to do a heck of a lot more than what it does if this was set up with the proper shutdown boom i'd be i'd be willing to pay more for it than the, the 20 to 30 bucks that it should be going for but it's not the way it functions who knows maybe we'll see a revision in the future i think that might be pretty awesome but right now i bought this case with my own money for 25 bucks i bought the 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 ultimate cooling kit the dual fan heat sink i bought that for about 11 bucks so total with this case with the awesome cooling i'm sitting at about 30 35 36 bucks i'm i'm fine with that i'm happy with that the fan runs quiet i've had no issue with it i have ran this case with my pie in there and the ultimate cooling kit for several hours now doing some mass transfers and testing games and i have not had any overheat warnings no voltage warnings nothing everything has worked great and i'm i'm happy so i hope this video was of help to you guys smash that like button if you could i really would appreciate it subscribe if you're not already a subscriber check out the links in the description for these items if you want to peep them out with that said i'll catch you guys next time boom